Hello and welcome to week two of Patching the Hole in the Barn Door. This is part of my weekly Block of the Week series. And I'm excited that you're here. And if you've stumbled across this video and are wondering if you can catch up, the answer is a resounding yes. There is a playlist that will be added to each week with that current week's block, but all the previous weeks are there. And if you would like to have the instructions emailed to you, then join the mailing list and every Wednesday morning, they will be sent to you. And then on Wednesday evenings, you can premiere this video. All right, so let's get right to it with our poem. Will that work? I'm not so sure. Aunt Grace let out a squeal. I don't know, but the wind's picked up and is spinning the pinwheel. That's right, this week's block, the pinwheel. This is a super fun block to make. And if you've already made the first block, you have all the information that you need because the block involves half square triangles and they happen to be the exact same size as the ones that are used in the frame. So let me show you how to put the block together. I've chosen two colors for this block, a purple and a green. And I think those will go nicely with the pink frame I'm planning to put it in. I already have a four inch strip from cutting previous quilting things. So I'm gonna set that aside for a moment and cut a four inch strip off of the green. First, it needs a press. Since I will need two four inch blocks and I now have two four inch strips, I'm gonna go ahead and layer those straighten the edge and cut my two blocks. Save the leftovers for later. I'm going to place the squares right sides together, pairing one green and one purple. Now we're going to be making half square triangles just like we did for the frame blocks. So I am going to mark a center line and then I'm going to mark a quarter of an inch on each side of that line. You can do this by taking a ruler. I'm using a smaller one. It's a little easier to handle. Drawing down the center and then using that drawn line as a guide to mark a quarter of an inch on each side of that line. But in cleaning out all my things, I came across this nifty little tool that I can align with the center. I could draw down the center. It has slots that you can do that, but I don't really need to. I'm just going to draw on each side. These will be the stitching lines because I had already drawn that line with my other ruler. So let me show you again on this one. If it's hard to line up looking through there, you can use the lines on your mat. And that way it's a little easier to see if you have the whole thing aligned. Then I'm just gonna draw the lines here, holding it in place. And on this side. These are the stitching lines. Let's stitch. All right, my seams are sewn. I'm going to go ahead and cut between the sewn lines. You don't have to be super accurate, you just don't want to cut the lines you've sewn. Time to press. I'm going to press towards the purple. All pressed. Time to trim. This square needs to trim down to a three and a half inch square. Many rulers have a 45 degree angle line on them, and you can use that to help trim down your block. So I am aligning that 45 degree angle with the seam. And once I have the block aligned along that seam, I'm just double checking that my block 
is at least three and a half inches and it does go over a little bit. That's great. And there's a little overage over here. Perfect. We're going to just whack that off. Turn my block. There's another 45 degree angle going in the opposite direction. This is my top edge that's been cut. And so I am going to align along that angle and make sure that the line at the top is straight so that even if my angle is off, I would want to find a compromise somewhere in there, but it's pretty straight on. And again, I'm double checking that the block comes to at least the three and a half inch mark. It does, but let's trim off this excess. All right, both sides of the green are trimmed, bringing it back, 45 degree angle. But now I have two sides. This side, which should align right with the three and a half inch mark, and then the edge along the top should match up with that line there. And at the same time, I should be along that 45 degree angle. Holding it all in place, giving it a trim. All right, one more side to go. And again, 45 degree angle, three and a half inch mark, and then also right here along the bottom and the top, that should be three and a half inches. All those are squared off edges, so I just need to straighten this last edge. And there I have a perfectly trimmed block. So I'm gonna repeat that for the other three and then come back and arrange. If you've sewn a scant quarter of an inch seam, you should have no problem trimming off excess from probably every side. If you find that you're cutting it really close, you may want to sew more to the inside, towards the center of the block when you are stitching. All right, we have all four blocks, so let's arrange them. The idea is that from the center, the diagonals radiate outward. So if you have a piece that's going this way, it doesn't have that diagonal seam radiating from the center. And we're gonna sew this together in rows, row one and row two. Once we have the rows sewn, we'll sew it all together. We're ready to sew our two rows together. By the way, here's a helpful hint when you're sewing the rows themselves. They're exactly the same. One just gets flipped around. When you're at the machine, just make sure that you're sewing both sets the exact same way. Now, let's sew. And again, I have pressed towards the green. Well, that one not so well. Back with my rows sewn together. And before I flip it over, you may remember from the nine patch block that we were able to open up the seams and press them in different directions to help lessen the bulk. There is a lot of fabric right here in the center, practically everything. So if we press this seam towards the green and also this seam towards the green, and that allows us to open up this little center part where we get a mini pinwheel. Let's go press and reveal the center. And there's our block. Needs a little squaring up. It should finish at six and a half inches wide. That will mean that this center seam here should be three and a quarter inches in from the side. I'm starting at the half inch part. So one, two, three and a quarter. This side actually looks pretty good. There's a little unevenness here, so let's see what's going on. Again, I'm at three and a quarter. This seam, which I didn't really need to trim, is at the three and a half, is at the six and a half inch mark. And there's a little tiny bit over here, and I'm a bit shy right in there. But you know what? That's going to be okay. I'm just going to keep that in mind that this edge here is the right width. And so when I go to sew my rectangle, to the side. I will make sure that I am following along here. You can kind of see the mat line coming in behind and it'll all be fine. I think the block in the other direction is pretty good. 
All right, let's figure out how we're going to lay this out. So I'm going to sew this row together, this center row together, and then this bottom row. Let's go do that and come back here. All right, we're back with our rows sewn. Now I have pressed towards the half square triangles on both the top and the bottom and towards the center for the center row. Might seem counterintuitive, but when we go to sew our rows together, we can nest those seams and then when we press them open, they'll reverse. Let's sew this block together. I wanna to go ahead and manipulate these seams so that I can press the half square triangle towards the rectangle and this center block comes up towards the rectangle here. So that'll be opening this seam up just a bit. And that again, just helps to reduce the amount of bulk that is on the block. I'll do the same to the other end and come back with the finished result. I'm gonna use my 12 and a half inch square ruler to square up my block and it'll be all ready. Well, that's a wrap for this week. I am so excited that you are joining along with the block of the week. And as we progress through the 12 blocks, in the end, we'll have enough blocks to create a quilt. And I have multiple settings so that you can create anything from a lap size quilt up to a queen size. Yep, that's right, with just these 12 blocks and some additional fabric, of course. All right, well, I'll be back next week to bring you another block to help patch that hole in the barn door. Until then, see ya.